exercise part 3 from the Transact SQL and exercise will follow for part 3 of, of Transact SQL ok we will continue on the table employee salary scale and job status ok that we have created in the join part ok don't forget this so good luck Exercise 34, we, we will continue on the table employee, salary scale and job statue that we have created in the join part. Okay, don't forget to use this table. Uh, so exercise 34, select the employees from rows 7 to 13 with their name in uppercase ok so we look exercise 35 um, find the men who are in the financial services and with the if get this result with mister ok so you must have this uh, this result with the gender mister with four line for us um, so click this one just on the first line okay don't forget to use the if function good luck exercise 36 find people who were born after may with this result um, you must have this result with michael jackson in first line the after me colon uh, must also be made more even with the name of the month on the right okay you can write this rocket with the case when but in this exercise we will use the choose function okay exercise 37 Find a way to write this query with the result format in Italian. Okay, you must therefore have in your select this result with a colon with the Italian IES and the format of this date in Italian. Okay, so it's up to you. Exercise 38 Replace in the employee table uh, Michael Jackson by Harry Potter uh, you must therefore on the first row replace the value Michael by Harry Potter I am not giving you the function that will help you in this task, task uh, I will let you find it for yourself so good luck exercise 39 with the select, find me the initial of Brad Pitt and Clint Eastwood. Okay, in the third column, you will need to display the initial of my two friends, Clint Eastwood and Brad Pitt. Okay, so I also let you in uh, uh, let you search in this exercise for the right function uh, in Transact to display this result. Okay. Exercise 40. Find me the name in the employee table that are longer than six characters. Exercise 41. Can you please correct me this request? I have a lot of errors in the script with the uh, with, uh, John, substring, and len, and so on. So, can you help me to fix this query? It would help me a lot. Thank you very much. Let's go for the answer to the exercise. Exercise uh, 34, select the employees from line 7 to Thirteen with their name in uppercase. Okay, for the uppercase is the function upper. Okay, 
from employee ordered by and the specificity of the this exercise it's to write a offset offset seven rows fetch nets 13 rows only okay and if I pre this query I get the line from 7 to 13 okay and if I do a select to check select from employee order by name and if I will this query we see that DiCaprio it's line eight. so it begins to seven just after coach here. okay and stop at Michael Jackson okay exercise 35 find me the men who are in the financial services and with an if to get this result with Mr. Here I am, I am not going to detail the whole drawing, the only specificity, what's the if, okay? If we replace by the case when, with the if, gender, Mr. or Mrs. And if I play this query, here we have the men who are in the financial services, okay? gender, mister, with the if function. Exercise 36, find the people who are only after the month of May by obtaining this result. We can of course write this query with the case when, but the specificity of the exercise was to work with the choose, as we saw in the demonstration of the choose Function, okay. Choose that part with the function that part month and the value into the choose function, okay. And one that path greater than zero five for the month of May. And here we have thirteen person with June, August, just after May, the month May, okay, August, and so on. As I said, 37, find a way to write this query with a result format in Italian. The answer of this exercise was with format function, with a day in uppercase, and the value of Italian, as Italian, from man, table, contact. If I run this query, we have Mercoledì, <laughs> in Italian, it's not the, my language, for Augusto. Okay. It's a 30 uh, act replaced in the homepage table Michael Jackson by Harry Potter. So, the solution of the exercise, it was to write to replace. Okay? So, we had to do to replace with the comma. And if I discover it, I can see that Michael Jackson, in the, for the first row, has been replaced by Harry Potter. Bye bye, Michael Jackson, and welcome to Harry Potter. Exercise 30, 39 with, with a select find me the initial of Brad Pitt and click this route. It's the same thing that the previous exercise we have to write two substring. One and two. Okay? With first name and name. And concatenate the result with the two substring, okay, with the plus. So, 
let's go, let's run this query, and the result is good. We have the initial for Clintis Wood and what put in for this exercise. So we have the initial of both of them. Exercise 40, find me the name that are longer than six characters. So the correction for this exercise was is the function then len name greater than seven. And if I run this query, I have seven seven with seven rows with wood bracket and so on. Last exercise, exercise 41. Can you please correct me this request? Uh, the goal of this query was to find the right John Elias. Uh, and it missing very some comma in the select. Okay, missing a parenthesis and the correction is just at the bottom. Okay. Hope it has not been very difficult for you. Do not hesitate to redo this exercise. And it seemed hard to you. You really have to practice to progress. Personally, I have practiced Transact SQL a lot. Okay? There were times where I struggled a lot. But, and by dint of practicing it, became easy. Okay? Thank you very much and let's move on to the next section. Small section on coercion on SQL Server. Why did I put a special little section? Because conversion are operation that we see very frequently in Transact SQL. You will see in many developments that the cast convert, try convert, and try cast, try cast sorry, function are used a lot. So I have to tell you about them soon so that you won't be surprised when you find them. Okay? So let's start with the cast. The cast function is a language, SQL language is a transcripting function which convert data of one type into another type. So we do a select and we will work on the dead birth column, date of birth column. So we will try a conversion with the cast function. Okay, cast with two parentheses. Okay, so the column that we want to convert has daytime true. Okay, you can see that the syntax is quite simple. So in this example, we are going to convert this column in the daytime true. Let's try a simple select. You can see the format of the column with the year, month, and the day. And if we try a conversion with the date time two, let's run this query. Here you can see that we have now the milliseconds. Okay? We are we have convert convert sorry the date time column, the date of birth column in date time. And how, how about playing both request at the center with the center with the data? If we run the select both, we see that the date times the date date time sorry do not return the millisecond while the date time does. Okay. Another example. I will try to convert the name, uh, the column name, sorry, it's a mistake, the column select cast, the name column, 
as the int. Okay, we're going to try a string column with some characters as a int with numerical. Now you know that the string can, can be converted to a numeric data. We have a error message convention file when converting the voucher value Jackson to that data tip type int. Okay? However, we can do the opposite. We can, for example, convert the age, which is in a hint, in Versa. Okay? Select cast age as Varsha 20. Let's run this query and there is no error message. So we can we can convert data in numeric types to string. Okay, there are some applications that for a reason uh, we want to do what it's called uh, an implicit conversion of data from numeric type to strings. So we will have to do a cast, otherwise the application will not work. Convert, convert the convert function uh, on SQL converts data from one type to another in a manner similar to cast. For example, if we do a select, it's the same syntax so from the cast. So we remove the as by replacing a comma. Okay. And if we run the to select, we will see that we have two different results. Convert int 52.79 will convert to 52. Okay? For the convert to Vasha for 63.3, it's the same result. Okay? For a conversion in Vasha. So convert inner int for this example win round half and give 52 and convert. Vasha with 63.3 will give a string. Okay? On the other hand, there is the third uh, extremely important parameter for the convert function. It's the format style you want to give it. For example, we have a date of birth colon in a date, okay, with this type of data. I can't, I can give it, sorry, int result form. Here, uh, for example, I want to convert this date of birth in a British format. So I have to write select convert Varsha, comma, with the name of the column and the format that we want to convert by date of birth column. Voilà. So I want to run this query and you can see that it works perfectly. Result in British with the convert 153 uh, and it converts to a British format. OK? Same thing for the German conversion. I want to, I put just one on the four. And it's in the format German, point, with a point. And to finish, here the conversion in Italian. OK? In format 105. And just below, a great link for the conversion table. If you click on it, you arrive to this table. Okay, you have 105 for the Italian, okay, 104 for the German, and so on. USA, USA, 110, 
110 okay and so okay so that was the demonstration about the convert and cast the uh, function so let's go for the next demonstration try cast and try convert try cast we return a null if the conversion fails let's see the first example say try cast try cast with abd as int as result we can see the syntax of a try cast with one parenthesis and the second parenthesis okay i think you understand it's impossible to try to cast this character as a lead. okay so we see that he returns a null instead of the error message okay it returns a null let's try with the cast select cast as a hint and we have a error message convert should fail when converting the varchar value abd to data type int okay and let's try a try convert it's the same syntax of a try cast we just replace the try convert and it's the same result that the track cuts. It returns a null. Okay. The difference between try convert and track cast is the same as convert and cast. We can just add a third value to convert. Okay. So in this example, I I, uh, I added a comma and for example. Uh, at random in commercial formation I put 103 that's the difference between try cast and try convert and if you try the convert it's the same result than the cast commercial fail and so on and if I try the try cast with the case when select case when try cast ABC as it if it's null it fails. So if it's null, it's zero. Else, okay. And if I run the query, I have a zero result. Same thing for the try convert. I have the same result. Try convert just here, and I have the same result. Zero. And if I replace the ABC, ABC by one, now it change is okay. It returns conversion okay. And if I insert a try convert, uh, a try uh, cast, sorry, in if try cast, select if try cast one as in. If it's new, it's fail, conversion, KO or convention. Okay, as a result, I think you find the result convention. Okay, because one is a hit. Same result for the try convert, is the same result. Okay, so you see in your development if you can't do a try cast or a try convert so you can reduce uh, your conversion errors okay so let's go to the next demo okay let's go for for six exercise on view and storage procedure here the first question exercise 32 can you create a storage procedure that we will name ps insertion two rows we which which will insert two rows into the table contact okay you must to insert this two row with your storage procedure by executing it one row from justin and one row from 
custom hooks. Exercise 43 create a second storage procedure that we will name PS update Monroe, who is going to do an update on the live on behalf of Monroe. And but Superman, my friend, is in his space. Okay. Exercise 44 create a PS Leonardo storage procedure and declare a variable in your storage procedure who is going to call the first name Leonardo. Okay. Exercise 45 create a storage procedure PS Marvel which will contain two variables and return the result by executing it. Okay, just below Hulk and Wolverine are some good friends. Okay, so good luck. Exercise 46 create a view that will be, you will call view edge where you will want to see two select women born between uh, 1976 and 1985. Exercise 47 create a view called the view convert, which will convert the colon date of birth in American format. Okay, so uh, you must have this result on the date of buff column with this format with the dashes okay starting with the month followed by the day and ending with real okay so good luck okay here are the answers for the exercise from 42 to 47 um, i hope it was not too hard for you come on let's go with exercise 42 in this exercise uh, exercise sorry you just had to create a story procedure with an insertion of two rows okay and um, the name of the story procedure to create is ps insertion tool uh, and if i run this story procedure with two rows for Tom Hanks and James Dean. If I run the story procedure, I have two rows affected. And if I do a select, you can see at the end of the table, Tom Hanks and James Dean. Okay. Exercise 43, create a second procedure that will be named PS. PS update tomorrow, who is going to do an update on the row behalf of on Monroe and put Superman in his place. Uh, it's a question similar to question 42. You have just to replace an insert by an update. Okay, and if we play the store procedure we see that there is one more affected and that Superman has replaced Marine Mono sorry and now is Superman Marine <laughs> okay exercise 40 for you have to create a variable and call it afterwards in the execution of the storage procedure okay sorry so the question is create a ps leonardo storage procedure and declare and declare the variable in your storage procedure okay who is going to call the first name leonardo so i created a variable called called first name but of course uh, you can call it what you want and so when the storage procedure is executed with 
Leonardo, it will call the first name column because the first name column equal the variable first name. Okay, so let's run the story procedure and we have. Sorry, I forgot to create this. Let's run the story procedure and we have the row these with Leonardo display. Exercise 45, create a story procedure, PS, malware, which will contain two variables. Okay, and return uh, this result by executing it. In this exercise, it was therefore necessary to declare two variables, one for malware one and the another for Mother to that we associate with the set equal hook and the second variable with Wolverine that we call Wolverine. Okay, with these two variables, we associate a print with the concatenation with the plus and so here you have Mother one and with the plus for the concatenation and plus and marvel two. okay you can see that there is space for the end from the end and the first quote because if we remove the space the spaces between the end and the code and also this one this space between the plus and Mav and uh, R some good friend, all the, all the world will be pisted. Okay, uh, so let's run if I play the story procedure that I created, I've created before. You can see the spaces between each world. Okay. But if I do an alter procedure, and for example, I remove this space between the Marvel 2 and our some good friends, and run the alter procedure. If I run again the story procedure, you can see that the world are the words are stuck. Okay, Wolverine and ha are stuck okay so i admit, admit sorry it's a little more difficult exercise but which we have uh, taught you you can declare two variables in a storage procedure okay exercise 46 we are going to create a view uh, we'll therefore make a select on the contact table where the sex equal from that and the date of birth between 1976 and 1985. Okay, so in this exercise, you have to create a view with the select inside the view. Okay, what's does the select from the view give? You can see that the results are good. These results are good. And to finish uh, exercise 47, create a view called uh, view convert, which will convert the column date of birth in American format. So the goal of this exercise was to create a view that will do a select with the convert, okay, with the date of birth in London T as date of birth uh, to have the date format in American format. So let's create the view and what does this give? You can see that all the dates in the date 
of birth color as uh, is in her American format. Okay? Hope it uh, has not been too hard on you. Always think about the progress you have made since, uh, since uh, sorry, starting this course. Keep, keep practicing and practicing over and over again and be proud of use yourself okay it's very important okay so let's go for the next section if else and what for um, so we will start with if and else which we often use in all development in transact sql okay so when if is true it's therefore executed okay the if condition is if uh, if the if condition sorry is not made the boolean expression returns the value false and thus goes execute the else else uh, else it's uh, used in the case when to okay we will see a very simple example we will assign this variable with the integer for with a age of 15 okay so i'm gonna put a condition so if there is a person uh, who have the age of 15 it will run this select else it will run the second one in this case, in this case the age of 15 in my table contact does not exist okay there is there's no age of 15 so it will execute the second select okay it will uh, take all the hedge different from 15. let's run this query and i must remove the name and first name column and you can see that it select all the hedge because it runs the second one select edge where the edge different from 15 okay and if i want to change for example the variable for the edge i put the 17 and run this query so it it's okay okay it runs the first select because the edge equal the edge of 17 okay so don't forget the if and the else in your transact sql script which we uh, you you often use in your development okay what for what for blocks the execution of the processing storage procedure or transaction until the specify time or time interval is reached. Wait for it's uh, an SQL function that is very handy, especially for DBA. Personally, I use it very often. Okay. It uh, when, for example, we are going to do uh, two jobs and we want to put a break between them the syntax is very simple begin so begin i begin a transaction i start a transaction so begin like uh, the begin uh, as you seen in the storage procedure section uh, following the wait for delay okay after the two seconds it will execute the storage system storage procedure spf db with the hand okay you when you see a begin you always write a hand okay begin a hand 
is always is always associated. Okay. So let's run this wonderful query, and you can see that after the two seconds. Okay. After the two seconds, he, it executes the SPLDB storage procedure. So now you know what is uh, what is if a elf, if a else, sorry, and don't forget the wait for when you want to set a break in your processing. Okay? So let's go to the next demonstration. Replicate reverse and char index. Um, let's start with replicate. Replicate, uh, it's rip, uh, it repeats a string value uh, a specified number of time. Okay? So replicate uh, will replicate a value, a value the number of times you want. The syntax is simple. We do. Uh, replicate okay and the, the character we want to replicate following the number of time okay so in this example it's brad brad we will replicate four times where name equal pit use formation and let's run the query you can see that brad has been replicated four times. Okay. So replicate will replicate a character as much as you want. Uh, reverse reverse returns the reverse order of the string value. For example, select first name with the function reverse and do a reverse of my first name column. So let's run the query and you can see we do a reverse with the first name column and all the first name has been reverse. Okay, Brad now is Darb, Clint, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so we see this, is this example by applying reverse, it return the reverse first name. Okay. Personally, I never needed it, but know that it exists. Child, child x this function search for a character expression inside a second character expression, returning the starting position of the first expression if it's found. So we will see a very simple example. We will declare a variable with document, for example, and uh, we select with the variable document where is the vector and we want to find the position of Dark Vador in the is this string. Okay? So let's run the char index with the name and the variable. And if we run the query, we see that Dark Vador is at the 10 position. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So, in some cases, in your development, you will need, you will need to work with char index to find the position of a value you are looking for. Okay? So, let's go for the next demonstration. Concat and concat underscore w Yes. Uh, let's start with concate. So concate, this function returns a string that results from the concatenation. Okay? Or the joining of two or more chain values uh, from hand to hand. 
so concave, uh, we concatenate a string of fair result. So for example, we have the select concat rp pavle with uh, the date 11 with and the 25 okay as the result you can see that the syntax is easy quite easy so let's run this wonderful query we see that it returns happy birthday 11 and 55 okay so for your development for your sql script uh, don't forget the concave function okay it can help you uh, concave underscore w s we will simply add a separator okay if i do a select i can have all the data in one query separated with the hyphen hyphen um, so if i run this to select you can see that for the concat w uh, underscore w s w s you have the concatenation of the query so one with the hyphen simple following the second hyphen none okay is the concatenation of the first query one simple one none okay and so on two simple you can see that it's powerful it's so don't forget concate and concate w uh, underscore w yes for you sql developments so let's go for the next demonstration string split and stuff uh, string underscore split first will split the character expression using a specify separator so how does string split work you have to put the characters you want to fill in and it will make an underline with the comma separator okay so string split one two three four five and to make an underline with you have to put a comma separator okay i think it will help you enormously in your development so let's see the fantastic result as you can see here the result okay one two three with and it will make an underline okay with the, you have just, just to put a comma stuff the stuff function allows you to insert a channel into another channel okay stuff with the character expression the start the length and the replace okay let's run the query and you can see that um, okay for the hey the first character okay so it start to the second character so the b the b has been replaced by a g k l m n okay and for the three character okay so he replace b c and d and restart after the n at he okay so a b c a b c d uh, b c d sorry has been replaced and we start at e and f okay so that was the demonstration for string string split and stuff there are these are small functions that can greatly make you work easier during your development okay don't forget these two powerful function so let's go for the next demonstration 
merge. Merge allows you to extract rows from a source table to make an update, a delete, or insert in a target table. This avoids uh, writing multiple modification in several instructions. Okay? So merge is extremely powerful. It uh, can be very handy in some cases. It will save you uh, from writing multiple chains in multiple instructions. Okay? I will show you right now. Use formation as usual. I will create two simple tables. One table book inventory and the second table book order. Both tables have been created and I insert some simple value. And on the second table. Okay? To show what the merge can do, I will first do a join on the two tables. Okay? And we will see what uh, we will merge. So, let's go. So, you must to know that uh, in first uh, into is an optional clause. Okay? What we are going to do is when this uh, there are values that match here yeah, is going to do a join on the two columns and add the quantity. Okay? So we play all the query and let's focus on the values 1, 3 and, uh, and 5. Okay? So, we can see that these are the values that will be affected by the join. The join, sorry. For one, okay, with the join, so uh, at each correspondence on the join, it will add the quantity, okay? For the join, so it's six plus three equal nine okay six and three for the three okay it's a join on the three so three plus uh, zero equal three and for the values five okay five plus zero equal five okay so what it's going to do is when there have values uh, that match, it's going to do a join on the two colon and add the quantity. Okay, let's run the merge. We will check anyway. Merge three rows affected. And what's happened if I run? We see that uh, we have just the value that match and there are and there are quantities okay sorry for the three it's not free it's zero okay but for the one it's the good result six plus three okay so we merge all the matches that were uh, they're doing the join and added the quantity. We can also do uh, a merge in a delete and an insert. So you have to remember the first table here, it's the destination table. Okay? And the second one is the source table. Okay? We are going to work with the join we have done before. Let's run the two both query to make it easier. So in this example, if the query is matched, matched, sorry, uh, then delete. Okay? And if the joy is not matching, then insert a new rules. 
So we have a quantity equal zero that is for the great USB. The quantity is zero, so the row three will be delayed. Okay. So this one, sorry, it's a, if the, it's the source table and this is the destination table. Okay. So the rows with the seven has not patched in this table. So the insertion of the lice, the row seven will be done on this table. Okay. In the book inventory table. So let's run the merge. Three rows affected. And what does the select give? You can see that it deleted the row three. Okay, that had zero. So it didn't match and inserted the row seven. That was not in the source table. Okay. So we saw that by doing a query that is not extremely difficult, we did many instruction just by doing a merge so use a merge okay don't forget this powerful function you will see that in some cases it will it will help you greatly so let's go to the next demonstration dead name dead name will return a value we want to give it in the string Okay, uh, for example, we have this date, okay, and the following date, okay, with the August 25. And this example, in this example, we want to get the, uh, the date name of the year, okay. So let's run the query and it returns. Uh, 2017 okay the year just the year in the following value in the string value okay and if we play this free request at the same time we will see that the uh, when the date name date name so we are the hour is the set of the hour okay for this example for the minutes it's 36 just below okay and the date name for the month we have a particularity particular particularity sorry for the month date name month it will returns the August, just here. Okay. So it converts the month into a string, August. So there is not a big difference between date name and date part, ex except that date part takes a part of the date given to it as a string. But when we build when we put a uh, date part month, it does it not convert the month into a string. It returns the value 8. So let's run this for query. And you can see that for the month example, it returns the 8. And now, it, not the August value okay so there is not a big difference between date name and date part but they are very useful get date get date is an analytic function that allows to know the current day date okay the syntax is very simple it's select get date with two parentheses Okay, so today it's the 22 February. Okay, 2021. 
but what's the difference between git date and git utc date what why uh, we have one hour difference so you can see here it's 11 and for the utc date it's 10 so one why one hour difference it's utc time universal time coordinate or greenwich mean time greenwich mean time it's the i think you understand it's the gmt time okay and if you want the query just below uh, you can see that the server locate time for me it's eight and the server gmt times is 10 okay there is there is one hour different so when you see get utc date you know now what it means um, so let's go to the next demonstration date add and date diff date add will happen uh, a value a specified number as a signed integer okay uh, add the specified that part okay the syntax is date add with date part number and following the date okay let's write the first uh, query with the date add date add following the parenthesis for example i will write the month okay comma and one following one for the number and the date okay we we have for example 20 20 21 uh, 08 13 okay and we close the parentheses if I want the query um, we see that it it added a month okay zero eight thirty and now it's zero nine thirty for the September we can add also for example two days by adding today so the query is select date had day okay uh, the number two in my following colon date of birth and from my favorite table contact okay let's run this query and you can see in the second colon it had uh, the two day uh, zero four august sorry and now it's zero six zero two zero four okay so it's uh, had in my second column the today we can do a lot of thing with the date we can do for example um you can do a that had and a that diff they diff in the same query okay for example in this example it's date had with the date diff for the first day of term Okay, let's run this query and you can see that it's zero one for the first day of the term okay so let's run the following query the last day of the term for the 41 okay and the first day of the current term okay for the one journey today we it's the 22 february so the first day of the current term in the one february one january sorry okay and the first day of the following term with the plus one okay i think you understand it's the the one april 
ok ok let's play we can go further we can get with the six query we can get the first day of the last week the first day of the week the first day next week the last day of the last week the last day of the week and the last day of the following week uh, week sorry and uh, we can play the six query in the same time you can see that the request it's a bit complicated okay you can don't forget to download in the course uh, this script okay so keep them so let's run this six query in the same time and you have six different different results okay first day last week first day of the week first day next week you can see that it's very powerful the, the function date that add is very powerful okay so next function date diff date diff uh, returns the number of values okay uh, of a specified start date limit crossings uh, between the specified start date and end date values okay so if we do for example date diff with hour okay uh, with 9 and 11 i think you understand uh, so here it returns a difference of two hours you can see that it's very powerful between 9 and 11 so the result is two okay so here it's understood that the diff that there is that there is sorry a difference of two hours you can also do a day diff of month we replace the hour with the month okay and it returns the same result for the month okay two so you can uh, you can do a lot of things with the date diff uh, here for example the result is minus eight okay first september and the uh, no sorry 9 September 9 January sorry and the 1st January so the result is minus 8 for the day and following the next query for example if I take it uh, the 2 January and the 1 January so the result is 1 you can do a lot of things with the date diff and the date hand. It's very powerful. Okay, so let's go to the next demonstration. Here month. Here month allows you to get the last day of the current month. The syntax is quite simple. It's select we call the function EO month. Okay. Open the query with the parentheses. Take a get date. And we close the parentheses. Okay. So it's one. And here it returns. Uh, the last day of the month okay 28 February we can also get the last day of the next month we just uh, we have just to add the one after the get date with a comma okay let's run and 
you can see that is the 31 Mars. Mars, okay? We can get get uh, the first day of the month too, but there are no function for that yet. Okay, to get the first day of the month, we write a data pad, select data pad with the month and the following query. Okay, we see that the request is a little more complicated and the first day of the month is the first for February okay we can also have the first day of the previous month we just had a minus one just here okay first day of the previous month the first January and the first day of the following month for the first March. Okay? And we can resume but month, sorry, and format at the same time. Okay? We had the here month inside the format function. Okay, format function that we have seen before in this course. Uh, so let's run this query. And here we have the last day of the month, of the current month, in French, in English, and in German. Okay, uh, you can see that the results are more readable when we do format okay so let's go to the next demonstration first example to show you the interest of partition function first of all this is there is a setup script setup windows partition function uh, that is attached in this section. Okay, if you want to use it, don't, don't not hesitate. Take this script and let's execute just this one. And if you want to play with it, no problem. You can execute this script. Um, so let's use my new database, uh, Windows function. Okay. This is the database that we have created before in this script. Um, so I will start with a simple example. I will, for example, calculate the difference between two columns. Okay? On the calculate, on the current date, sorry, and date minus one. Okay, this is, uh, we see that this is a somewhat complicated request. We do an outer comply with a join on the derived, uh, derived table. Okay, as see here. So we're gonna to play it. And let's check the time of this request. Uh, 25 seconds okay remember about this time we will see now the partition function we see uh, that the request it is a much simpler request okay we do uh, we do select from uh, the stock history table with the lag function lag relates a value to the one that preceded it. Uh, so let's run the query. And here we have 14 seconds. Okay, for the same result. So we saved 
uh, nine seconds just by rewriting this windowing, windowing function. So we can rewrite a query by adding a partition function on certain columns. And we see that it's much simpler and much more readable. Okay, so think of using this windowing function. Okay, so let's go to the next demonstration. So let's go to the demonstration. Windowing function. The windowing function on SQL Server, we we greatly simplify the rewriting of some SQL queries that you have already predefined, okay? And we will see that they are powerful and that they are not very complicated to, to set up. You should know that a windowing function always work with the over clause. The over clause uh, defines a user specified windows or word set in a, SQ, in a query result set. Okay? I will show you all this, uh, this in the demonstration afterwards to make it easier for you. Okay? Remember that the Windows function always work with the select and the order by clause. They don't appear in form where, goodbye, or having. Concrete example we have in this example, we have the customer ID on the left, and here we have on the right a windowing function. We put a, a window on the customer ID on the left column. So here we have three values at 11,000 uh, and we see that at the level of the row number column on the left, we have correctly classified this window with function that we have set up on the customer ID column. Okay. And we see below, below that uh, it continued from 11,000, from 1, from 2, and so on. Okay? So, let's go to the demonstration. Okay, let's go for the demonstration. Uh, before starting this demonstration, let's download the database AdventureWorks at attached in this course and restore it. Okay? So, let's download this AdventureWorks database, okay? It's a, it's a backup. So, let's return on the demonstration and please pay attention to the directory path when you will restore the database. For example, here I am on the D drive. So I download my database on the G drive and the AdventureWorks database is here. Okay. So I restore my database from the D drive AdventureWorks database and uh, you have to copy and paste the script. And let's restore the database. Okay, the restore has been done. Okay, let's go for the demonstration. Use adventure box. It's good. You have you are on the so you are on the good database adventure box. And let's talk about first for uh, with over and partition by close. So the hover clause works with order by, partition by, and framing, row number, and, and so on. Okay? So let's take a simple example. Take the row number function with which we list 
the list all the customer ID from start to finish. Okay, we gonna work on the customer ID colon. So in this example, we're gonna work with the raw number function. Okay, raw number with two parentheses. Okay, over we had the hover close and inside the hover close we have to add the order by. Okay, because the hover close always work always works. Sorry, with the order by. So let's take the customer ID column. <clears throat> and if I run this fantastic query, we start with the windowing function on the customer ID column. So it's sorted in order with the order by close. Okay, and we see that the customer ID start with 11,000 and the row number columns are sorted in order. Okay, one, two, three. And, and so on. Okay, we can see that the third uh, the row for the customer ID 11,000, uh, 1, 2, 3, and it's with the partition function. And if we go to the end, let's go to the end of the of the query, we get to the line 31465. Okay, so that's what uh, that uh, that was a pretty simple of the row number. And what if I put an order by on the sales order ID column? Let's execute this query. So you can see that by default, SQL uh, will take the order by that we put after the from. You can see that it's order by sales ID order. Okay, so it's up to you to see what kind of order by you want to put first. And uh, in the hover windows, you can also put a desk or a ask as you want. Okay, so let's run this query. You can see that the in the order date colon, okay, on the desk. Uh, so we start from the top down, we can do top down, sorry, and we can do the opposite with the ask and from down to the top ok I don't really see the point of doing it but we can put many order in the hover clause just in this example I put two order on the customer ID and the order date. If I run the query, it works very good. But personally, I don't see the point of doing it. Doing it. But know that we can do it. Okay? We will now see the powerful partition. By We will do a windowing function on the customer ID. So we had the partition by function on the customer ID column. Okay? So let's execute this query. As I showed you in the demonstration before, it's sorted in an ascending way. Uh, the customer ID and the row number column. Okay? So 11,000, 1, 2, 3. Okay? And the Next, the following, 11,001, 1, 2, 3, and so on. 11,002, 1, 2, 3. 
you can also do many partition by in the same query. For example, here I, I do a partition by on the over date colon and the customer ID colon. Okay. Personally, I don't see the point, but know that we can do it. Okay. So you in this demonstration, you see the power of data partitioning by doing some very basic queries for now. Okay, so let's go to the next demonstration. Ranking in the real world. In the real world, we have going to have a question. They will tell me, Olivier, I want on the table a top for from product id okay and then it continues with the next four and so on okay so i want this four was with the 717 okay and continue on the next the next row so we will first of all see how things are going are uh, at the top 10 level. So let's run the query with the project 707. So the top 10 does not meet our expectation too much. Okay, we see that, uh, that this does not solve of our problem. It takes the top 10 or whatever value you choose, but it won't continue, which is normal. Uh, so, what we are going to do first, we are going to start with the row number that will number each row of the project ID column. Okay? So we do a partitioning on the product ID colon. Okay, for seven hundred seven, one, two, and so on. Okay. And for the value seven hundred eight, uh, we start again from one. So the row number is not but we start number, numbering the rows. We're going to do why not to try sorry a CTE and the CTE will solve uh, our problem. So we are uh, what we are going to do, we are going to cut this request. Okay, we are to do a select inside the CTE. And then a faint, we are going to do a city and take the row number on the alias uh, that's here from order. And we tell it to return values that are less or equal to 4. Okay? And we see uh, that by magic, it works very well. We see the power of the working function and the city. D'accord? Okay. We see that we start from 707 and we move to 708. So in this example, we see that we can solve our problem easily without a very complicated request. So we can call an alias in a city. We will see another example. I have a table where I have to classify many cells. I am going to divide into three sections, bad seller, improving seller and best seller. Okay, so I will do a select for to explain you a select from the sum total due 
And in fact, we will add a new colon. It will be necessary to classify the total of sales in three thirds. One third for bad seller, one for progressing seller, and one for the best seller in the another columns. What are therefore going to do a city and a entire with the number by? Okay, so let's go for the city with the name sales from sales and with the entire function partition. So what does it give? We see that the entire cut well into buckets okay he cut the table into three parts two and three sorry and four okay so i cut request into three pieces so i go in to do to do sorry two city and we, and we will see from the second one i'm going to do a choose Okay, where I put the values bad seller, mid, mid drug sellers, or bad sellers, sellers on the rise, and best seller. Okay, so I do two city sales, and inside the first city, I had a second city with the End time okay so two city sales and buckets and at the end of the query i'll make a choose on the buckets city so let's run this fantastic query there is a mistake and you can see that my table has been well divided divided according to the three types of salesmen bad seller sellers on the rise and best seller okay we can write it another way which is a bit easier visually i can do a choose Okay, why, where I put an entire the over of the freeman. So you can put an entire into the choose and put the free sellers. Okay, and what does the seller give? And we see that we have it's the same result. So we see that it's not very. It's not extremely difficult to create an SQL query to have a rendering that is difficult to implement. Okay, so think of using this function to make your life easier. Okay, so let's go to the next demonstration. Aggregation in ranking function. We can have cool things to do with aggregation with ranking we will see that in some cases it can, it can help us uh, out and simplify transact sql for us okay so i take the same database i'm not sure works and i'm going to play uh, on the production product table on the product id and list price uh, column and run the select and in this example, I want the, num the total number of project in my query and the total average for the least price. Okay, so where we think of the total number, we think uh, directly of the count and we think of average. Okay, for the average, it's normal. So we're going to clear this request and we will see that for me i am not satisfied of that i have the value one 
why I want the number of products in each row of the column. Here there are 295, so I want uh, my product. Okay, here my 295 products to be to be displayed in the all column. Okay, <clears throat> so for this. Uh, for the solution, let's add the over, over close. Okay, count over and the two parentheses, and same thing for the average. Let's add the over close. And count over, we calculate uh, the number of rows there are in the column, and we will partition directly in it. So let's run the query. And here you can see that we have 295 rows and also the average of the list price. Okay, so he calculated the total average that is displayed on the for all the price. Okay. So you saw that just by doing a count over and average over the cut is not very difficult to write okay and we will add a new colon we will add the category name colon we will play on it so let's run the query with the categories and we will play on these columns okay category So we will do a sorting work on uh, in the category name on the partition category name. So let's run the query, and you can see for the bikes is always uh, 97, and for the components category it's 134 products. Okay. Here we see that it's powerful and it's uh, that is easy to partition. Okay, so we did an average with the parties and uh, over our partition band, and we see that it works very well. Then, so then to finish, we can also to refine and make the request even a little prettier. We can do a mean and a max over okay so let's run the query and you can see that the mean and the mean list of price and the max list of price for the list of price colon here he took the minimum value and the maximum value of the list of price colon and it repeated them on all them column. Okay, so we can associate average with another directly to display a complete aggregate over the entire column. Understand? If you have these kinds of question, know that it can be done very easily with the partitioning function. So let's go to the next demonstration. Lag and lean. Lag and lean are two cool functions and not very hard to set up at the transact SQL server. So lag access data from a previous row in the same result set and lead access data from a later row in the same result. Okay, we will see a simple example. We will take, for example, this query. We will put, we will put, sorry, a lead here. Okay, with the name of the column, then the associated number of jumps. Okay, and we do another here, and we will do a partition 
on the quota date color. And I will, will explain you what lead has done. So lead uh, took the next quota in the uh, this one. Okay? For this first of all, the next quota begin with the 5 5 appears here. Okay? Same result for the second row. The next quota is this one. Begin with the 5 and 0. Okay? He took his keepered the next row and took the one after it. Okay? And what if we switch, switch sorry, with the I delete the one and I replace the one by the two. Let's run this wonderful query. So, since I put two, it will not take the value that follows directly, but it take it will take the one after. Okay, so it did two jumps for the quota column. Okay? You can see that it's very simple to, to, to set up. So for the lag, the lag does the opposite. It will return the row after. Okay? It's the same syntax that the lead. Okay? With the name of the column, number of jump and over on the quota date column. So let's run. So at the lag level, it's uh, at the navigator, since there is no previous row, it returns zero. Okay? In the second row, it plus said the first, the previous quota next. Okay, to the actual quota of that row. It's the same thing for the first row, previous quota. Okay, and what if if we switch to lag two, and if we get a look on the result, if I change it to two, uh, we see that it returned zero in the two previous rows and showed the previous value of the third one, this one. Okay? So we see that we skip two rows. So we see that the lead and lag are very are not very difficult to set up. They allow us to have a better visibility of the previous or later column in Transact SQL. Okay? So, let's go to the next demonstration. Rows range embedded preceding uh, function. You can see that in some cases it can be very practical uh, in some cases when we struggle to do a SQL, to do the analytics in Transact SQL for the business intelligence uh, working, okay? So we will work on the salary table, the salary column, sorry, and with the, the sum, okay? As salary with the alias. So let's run the query. And we see that on the sales person ID, the value for is repeated four times, okay? We call this is a range of four. Okay, three times, sorry, and not four. So we will, first of all, of all do a sum of the salary column. We will do an order by on the sales person ID, and we will do a row 
unbundle, prescinding, and arrange, unbundle, prescinding. Okay? On the sales person ID. So, unbundle, prescinding, act on all the rows before the current row. Unbundle, following, acts on all lines after the current line, the current row. I will show you what it does exactly by playing with fantastic query. We will understand much better. So for the words unbundle proceeding, the name is called cumulative sums by rows. And for the range, it's cumulative sums by range. Okay, it's important. So what the row unbundled in, unbundled, sorry, preceding did. It summed the true values of the first two rows, okay, which gave 189, okay? And then it had 189 plus 43, which equals 200. 32 and so on, okay, until the end. Understand? So, what does the range unbundled preceding did? It did the same as the bow, okay, it had all the sum, and but it stopped when it realized, uh, realized sorry, that was was repeating. And continue, continue from five uh, with the cumulative found in the first five. Okay, so I'm showing you here. It's easier to understand. So here we see that uh, it did 106, uh, two, uh, 26, sorry, plus uh, 63 equal 189 okay and then with add up add and add the level of the range we see that it added add up one time and repeated the value because the value for is repeated okay so now let's suppose that we have to do the same calculation but in the reverse order okay so we will uh, therefore use the row between current and uh, unbundling following. Okay? Unbundling means, uh, means without boundaries. Uh, so I will do it in the reverse order. Let's run the query. And here we see that it does exactly sorry the same thing except that it's done in the opposite direction so uh, 42 plus 41 equal uh, 83 okay and so on and at a level of 4 which is repeated three times it repeat repeat sorry the same accumulation three times and after that it continues normally okay so we did the same thing but from the bottom to to the top so then we we calculate the same the sum of the values that are adjacent to a current row only. Next example here we will use the combination of rows number with the words current, preceding and preceding and following. Okay, following and current row with the close between. So we will forget the notion of range and we will we'll talk about the rows. We will see row by row and I will show you what's 
happens. So it's important to understand for this colon, it's the sum of the, pre the one preceding and the one following and the current row. And for the second column, it's the sum of the current query and the two following. Okay, understand? So, for example, uh, for the 232, here it did 126 plus 63 plus 43, which means the previous, the current, and the next one. Okay, so that gave 232. You understand? So, another example for uh, 116, we always took the following, the previous row, so 33, the current, 33, and the following, the, uh, the next, sorry, 50. And E, the sum is 160. Okay? And as I explained you, for the second column, uh, for, for example, 132, it takes, it, it takes sorry, 50, and 41, and 41. Okay? So it takes the current row and the two following rows, which gives 132. Okay, row between current row and two following. You can see that that are powerful and that we can do a lot of things with them, and they are not very complicated at the syntax level. So words, range, ambient and proceeding can be useful in your SQL code. So let's go to the next demonstration. Truncate vs delete. Uh, the difference between a truncate and delete is that truncate is a DDL. Okay, data definition language statement. Such as create, drop, and alt. Okay. Uh, truncate and delete, delete data from a table. Okay. Uh, delete is a DML, data manipulation language statement, like select, insert, update, and so on. Okay. So truncate can not have a where clause. So truncate remove all the rows from a table without recording deletion okay so it won't make the log bigger whereas the delete uh, can make it bigger because it will delete rows by row the truncate does not do this at all okay it will move everything all at once uh, as I told you, uh, delete save all the data for each row in the transaction log file. So be careful when you when doing a huge delete. Check your SQL Server log logs. Sorry, Truncate does not erase data from pages, but marks them as reusable. Re okay. So when you have a lot of data, do delete. If you don't use that data anymore, do a truncate. Okay. Delete on the other hand physically deletes the data. Okay. So let's go to the demonstration. Let's go to the demonstration about the delete and truncate. So we create two tables parent table and child table okay 
the child table refresh uh, refresh sorry to the parent table with the foreign key okay foreign key reference to the parent table and the name column okay so let's create these two fantastic table and insert some random value and it's done now we do can we do a truncate with aware okay truncate table parent table and with the where name equal to d okay so okay it's not possible echo is incorrect syntax near the keyword where okay so not that in the truncate there are no filters everything is truncated so the whole table is deleted okay so let's do a big one for open a transaction delete and with the where and roll back to refine the transaction if you want okay so let's go fortunately with where we can do a delete i have a foreign key error but it works fine okay so let's do a roll back to refine the data and can we do a truncate with an integrity constraint does it take the integrity constraint in when i do i'm doing the truncate fortunately there is an integrity constraint on the foreign key so we cannot do a truncate and what about the delete is the same error message okay so now we will see the management of the rollback i do a begin run i do a truncate what does the seller give no rows okay as you can see there is nothing left and let's do the rollback to refine our data and what does the cell give luckily we can do it we refine the data rollback handling rollback on delete being turn delete select we can see that the data actually has been deleted rollback and select fortunately we can roll back on delay too okay table with identity create a new table with identity one one insert into this table some random value what does this give three rows okay so identity is interesting you have to be very careful with identity in some cases uh, we don't pay attention and we do a truncate on tables that have identity and then we do an increment that is not good so let's delete a rose delete id2 okay for john and not no let's delete the row has been done and what does the seller give you can see that the id2 has disappeared okay and what does the dbcc check in on give the dbcc check in on uh, lets you know the future value of the increment number okay so the current identity value value is free so here we start again from the next value four okay so let's insert a new row and you can see that now bruno has the id four okay and let's do a test for the truncate do again the dbcc check identity current identity value is null and let's insert a new table 
and the select and the identity now is one it will start over from one okay so watch out for way to delete data on Hoto's identity increment okay it can be dangerous for you data and your application so uh, this is the big difference there the, this is the big difference sorry for truncate and delete
Okay, let's go for the demo backup init. Backup with init, taking the backup first and then removing the holder backup files. Okay, let's go for the demo. Let's drop and create the backup at the demo. Okay, drop and create. We go backup database three times and see via the UNC path how it will go. Okay, let's go for the first demo. If you get a look, let's make a zoom. The backup demo back is now three megabytes. Let's go for the first backup. <coughs> if we check again, now the backup demo is six megabytes. And if we are doing the third backup, now it's uh, 10 megabytes. Okay. So we can see that the backup are peeling up on top of each other. If we had the with init option by making the backup three times, the file does not go. Okay, look. So, backup database, we have init. The database is now 3 megs, 3 megabytes. Once again, again, 3 megabytes, and so on. Okay, this is why we use the init option when we are using the backup database. Okay, question, can we restore from a backup which has sev several backups in the same file? Okay, so in this example, we will restore the first backup. This backup demo, I just create one tab. It's good, just insert one row. Let's make a new backup database with name on the right, backup one, name backup one. So it's the name of your first backup. Let's execute the backup, insert the second row, and make a new backup, a second backup with the name backup two. Okay. Now we have two backups, the first backup with values 1 and the second backup with values 2. But how will I know which backup to restore? Restore with restore header only. Restore winner only lets know the backup file saved in the file. Okay, let's execute this query and if we check on the left side, we see we have we have two backup name. Okay, let's go for a zoom. Let's zoom it. Backup one and backup two. Okay. If you want to restore just the one row, you must to take this backup, backup one. Okay. So the position is Okay, so let's go for the restore, use master, alter database, save single user with all back image And so we've get a check, let's check the syntax. On the right side, we have with file two just like that. Okay, with file two is this one. Okay. Replace, replace, replace the existing database existing on the server and stat equal five. Allows to follow the progress of the backup or the restore. Okay, let's execute this. You see the progression, 5% processed, etc. Okay, and what does the select give? It's perfect. Just one more. We have select 
we have restore with backup file one, with position two, sorry, and we can, you can see that just one row has been restored. Okay, and if I taking the file free, I think you understand. Let's just just what does the select give? Sorry, now there we have the two rows with the second backup restored. Okay. This is the demo for backup with copy only. When you make a backup on demand, for example, by a developer to reproduce a production bug, you must especially set the option with copy only. Otherwise, you can break the backup chain. Okay? Imagine the following scenario. There are several backup logs and their differential throughout the day, and a backup request is made at 1 p.m. Okay? Backup, this backup has this database which break the entire backup chain. Okay? And it can cause a big problem. If you must redo a complete restoration, if you have a production, a, produ a bug in the production bug, sorry, during the day, it's not possible. You have break the chain. Okay? It's very important when you make a backup during the day to set, to set up the copy only when you make a backup. Okay? Okay, let's go for a demonstration. Okay, so let's go for the copy only option. I'm going a little faster uh, because this demo is uh, quite long. Okay, first demo backup without copy only option. Okay, let's go. Delete the database. It's down. Create database backup demo. And uh, let's let's empty the backup history for how demonstration use backup demo and create just some table uh, just one table and insert one row first backup full okay it's done uh, insert second second and third row it's done First differential backup. It's good. Insert value four and five. Okay, it's good. So request from from a developer to have a backup of the production to reproduce a bug. A bug, sorry. Set. So let's make a full backup in production. Call, it the, call the name a quick full backup for there. It's done and make another differential backup for our demonstration. Okay. In summary, we have two full backup and two differential backup. Okay. And one backup on demand from the developer. Let's simulate a crash. The database has been deleted. And let's begin the restore. Restore from the first backup full. It's done. And now take the second differential backup. We are not taking the first for a gain of time, but we have to take the second differential backup. Okay, as you see, the differential backup. Make a zoom, let's make a zoom. The differential backup cannot be restored because the database has not been restored to the correct earlier state. Okay, so 
in summary, the backup chain has been broken. Okay, it's the it's very important to make to set up sorry the backup with copy only option. More details in this query. I will explain you explain you in more details why the chain has been broken. Okay, let's execute this select. Okay, let's make a zoom. So, backups have reference by GUID. GUID. Okay, in the backup set, in the colon backup set UID, we have a GUID. Okay, for the first differential is the same GUID. So, in the second differential backup is not the same GUID. Okay, is the reason why the backup chain has been broken. If you don't have the, main, the same GVID, the backup chain has been broken. Okay, so, so go for the second demonstration, but with the copy only option. Let's go, this master, drop and create the database. Database. Let's empty the backup history, create table and insert data. Okay, backup. Make the first full backup. Inset. Row three, two and three. First differential backup and insert in data. Okay. Request from the developer. We have to make a full backup in production, but I set up the copy only option okay within it and copy on. let's go for the backup another differential backup let's simulate a crash and we have two backup full and two differential restore the from the first full backup and now we take the second differential backup. I think you understand. It's working. Perfect. Okay. I just set up. I just put the copy on the option. And I have no problem for make a restoration from the production, the backup in production. Okay, let's modify in this query. It's the same query as before. And let's make a zoom. GWID or GUL in English as the same for the first differential and the second differential backup. Okay, the backup can be restored from the second differential. I think you understand is very important to set up this option. Remember that we can go back. If you forgot the copy on the option, we can have a serious consequence in the event of a problem in production. Okay, let's go for the next demo. Okay, this is the demo for backup with fiction. Backup with fiction will control if there are any corruption on your backup. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go for the demo. Drop and create database. It's done. Set in English. Use backup demo, create table, and it set just one more. Nothing complicated for the moment and backup database. Okay, now let's look at this database by the dbccing command. dbccing command is not, it's quite easy to set up. It just 
backup demo, the name of the database, and the name of the table. Okay, let's go for the DBCC in, and the, in this demonstration, we are corrupt, we are going to corrupt the name 147, 47 page. Okay. To corrupt a page, you should use DBCC write page command. Okay. The to write a page, the database must be in single user mode. Of course, <laughs> never do this in production. Uh, single user mode, and we are change the hexadecimal 147 page. Okay. Okay. Let's go for the DBCC write page, and now set set up the backup demo database on in multi user. Okay, corruption has been done. So what does the select give? Corruption has been detected. And if we check the number of, of page which has been corrupted is how page 147. Okay. Okay, the table, the table checksum is now corrupt because we corrupted the database. What if I tried a backup without the backup option? I forget to do this. Okay, let's go for the backup. Backup has been done, although the data page, data page is corrupted. It's a, it's a little worrying. With checksum option, checksum will check the corrupted web page on each backup. Let's go for the backup with checksum option. And we have a good message, a magnifique error message. The backup demo detected on an error on page 147. Okay. Shapes of the sound is very powerful. There is an option which allows to bypass the checksum. It's continue after a while. I am not a very big fan of this option because uh, is is bypass the corruption on your backup. Okay, but it's a solution when if you want to bypass this this corruption. Okay, so you have you have a one in message, a backup of a damaged database. Okay. In summary, personally, I set up a checksum on all my backup. It does not slow down performance and isn't it's an additional safety not to be neg neglected. Okay. So let's go for the next demo. Western log at the giving time. So let's imagine this scenario. We have a classic full backup between 9 a.m. and noon. Okay. I have a backup here at 10 p.m. Okay, the backup log. What's happened is that I have a, delete, a, del, a data deletion sorry, at 9.31. Okay. 931, someone made a mistake. He deleted a data in production. What we should is to restore the logs at a given moment, at the close second or the close minute. So we have we have to restore the data at 931 sharp. Okay? We could do this in SQL Server. We can restore in the time from logs. You must have log backups, of, of course. The database has to be in full mode, and we can restore data at the close second, at the close minute on the screen. Okay, so let's go to the demo. 
to start this demonstration, we will use master and we will put the base in single user and we will, we will drop it. Okay, use master. <coughs> Enter database and user and drop the database. Cat database and we put it in full for logs backup. Huh? It's necessary, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, set database backup demo in recovery full and create a single table. A simple one, a test table, insert a data in it, and we do a backup for the moment. It's a usual work. Let's make a full backup. And if we do a select in this table, it gives us one. Okay. So we will not the close second the interval between the full backup and the log backup. Let's take the tab, but it's in French. It's uh, 2 p.m. and 80 minutes and 45 seconds. And 2 p.m. 2 p.m. And And here we will create the incident. Okay, we will truncate the table in production. Truncate has been done and make a backup. What does the select give? No, okay, nothing. So it will be necessary to restore the log at 2 p.m. and 90 minutes. Okay, to be able to recover, to recover the value one in the test table. Between the last full backup and log backup, we deleted the data. So we will restore at a point in the time. Okay, so in select from table, we see there's nothing. I should absolutely recover my value one. So how do how do we come back sorry to the normal case? First, restore for the full backup, and don't forget the no recovery option. Let's go for the first full backup, and here we go for the restore log with the stop at option. Stop at means stop at a point in the time with the current date. So 8 September and copy and paste my my time 2 p.m. and 90 minutes. Okay, let's go for the restore log. Restore log has been done. Four page has been restored successfully. Restore database with recovery. Restore database with recovery has been done. And what does the select give? Select from table. You see that how selection, how selection sorry, give us, we recovered the value one because we stopped at a point in the time during the log. Okay. We see that it's still quite powerful and we can recover the data from a certain point in time. Keep in mind this powerful option with stop at, with restore with stop at. Okay? So let's go to the next demo. Restore with standby. Standby is an interesting option that Hello has examine data between every restoration. It can be very useful if you want to restore one precise data, but we don't know when the modification was done. Um, so you have to you have a restoration to do. 
the person that made the mistake doesn't know when exactly he'd, he made it. And with the standby option, we can track the evolution of the restoration that we can do in the database. So I'm going to do a small demonstration. Use master, I will drop it and will create, recreate it, the database backup demo. I put it in full mode, I create a table and insert as usual one data. And I will backup the database. Backup has been done and what does the select give? Just one more. Okay. So we're going to empty the table, but first we will not the time and the date before we empty it. It's 4 and 30 p.m. 4 and 30 p.m. It's in French, but in English it's 4 and 30 p.m. And 35 seconds. Okay, let's truncate the table. <coughs> and make the first backup block. We do a select and here we are, there is nothing. Okay. We will restore the database again to not start from the last full backup. And here we see that with the option standby, just here, standby. So restore log from the stop at, we read that the time, copy and paste, just here. So here in this, in this, in this example, so we will not mention the time. But in your case, if you don't know at what time the data was deleted, you can insert the time that you want. In my case, I noted the exact time. But for you, if you have a time slot between, for example, 11, uh, 30 p.m. and noon, for example, you can try 11 and 31, 11 and 32, and so on. And like that, you can see at what time the data was deleted. Okay, so here I'm going to, to put 4 p.m. and 30, and I run the log restoration via the option standby. <coughs> Restore log has been done, and if we get to on the left side, we can see, let's make a zoom, that the backup demo is in standby mode with win only. Okay? A standby will create a stopping point in the drive D backup. Okay? What does the select give? With the first restore log at 4 pm and 30 minutes and 35 seconds. Okay, we see, we see that the database, that by restoring, sorry, the log, starting from 4 p.m. and 30 minutes, we have the data, the data, sorry, that reappears in this log. So here, my time is exact. So here I can restore from the, from my log backup, thanks to my standby, I can say we are good at level of log. So I can restore at 30, 30, 30, uh, 4 p.m. sorry and 30 minutes and 35 seconds. Okay, let's go for the restore. And what does this give? It's perfect. Just you see, 
in this demonstration that is very useful. You can we can stop at the second that we want with the option standby. See at what hour, at what second we load the data. Thanks to the standby, but the stopping point and see the exact uh, in which the user deleted its data without paying attention. Okay, so um, remember about this option standby with restore. Okay, let's go for the next demonstration. In forums, we see a lot of people that talk about corruption that disappear. We can see that that our problem on CheckDB that we see running and we think that it's work. Sometimes it detects corruption, sometimes not. We ask ourselves question, we say, is the CheckDB reliable on SQL? Let's imagine the scenario. Let's imagine an SQL job that does a CheckDB every night reports a corruption problem and the DBA arrives in the morning. Does it check the bay and see nothing? In this case, in fact, there is always a corruption. Corruption, corruption doesn't magically disappear. As soon as you have one, it will always be there. It will always be persistent. Okay. In that case, you can say that certain patches are allocated to in to an index. When, when you create an index, and if the corruption is on one of those pages, one of those index pages, the rubble index that's going to follow behind will deallocate de sorry those corrupted page that index so it's going to retrieve over page of data when an index has been recreated with new data page the check db therefore will will not find any more the corruption that the corruption that was present earlier in the morning when the dba did the check db okay so be extremely vigilant. Corruption never, never go away. There are three types of IO errors concerning corruption. Okay, the first is 823. So, 823 is a hard IO error, which means that the SQL server asks Windows to read the data from the disk and uh, uh, Windows come back and say no, I can uh, read the disk. There, are, there is a corruption. So here we are talking about the 823 error at the hard level. We also have the software IO error at the software level. SQL server asks Windows from for certain data from the disk and Windows gives them give uh, the him to it. But SQL Server once uh, it has read this data detects detects that there is a problem. So here we are in the and on the eight hundred twenty four. Okay. That we will see in the demonstration right now. We are going to see that it's a 824 because we are going to modify a page by hand. 825, you see it, uh, it's a very rarely error. It's a data re reading error. It happens in very rare cases. Okay, we're going to look at 823 and 824. In very many cases, you will see this two types of errors. Suspect pages are always notified on the table that is 
on the msdb system database in suspect page okay in the sql error logs or also in the event log we will also see two command dbcc commands that are not documented by microsoft right page that will allow us to rank the page to corrupt them and dbcc in that will allow her to list the page we want to corrupt okay so we will talk all about it in more detail in the next demo it was just to let you know that we are going to use these two dbcc commands okay it starts use master and we are going to delete the database we are going to call it company we delete it we create it we are going to put it in multi-user we are going to create a type below and we insert 10 row cutable and insert 10 row so we are going to start listing the page we are going to put the name of the database and the name of the table in dbcc int okay just here the name of the database and following the name of the table okay let's execute this and what interest us is the page number okay let's make a zoom for example, we are going to take the width page, 225 page. Okay, so we are going to write this page with the hexadecimal value that doesn't correspond to it. Okay. In order to write the page, the database must be in single user, so no one has as to accept access it otherwise it doesn't work if i do it i do it directly it said english english it said repair statement not processed database need to be in single single user mode okay that's what i will do single user just right here and I put this value for hexadecimal okay I change the hexadecimal for the page 225 page on the database company as you see it's immediate okay uh, we're going to empty the table that will list the suspicious the suspect page page sorry that it doesn't distort the demo okay. and we are going to do the select what is the select going to say the select is very interesting because is going to tell us I can get my select out there's there is a page with a value that doesn't correspond to me so I cannot get the result we are on the page 225 that we have quoted before and we are on the message error Eight hundred twenty four. Okay, let's make a zoom. A good message and the page that we have collected before two hundred twenty five. And let's have a look in the error log. Okay, it's detected that there is is a 
is indeed a page that is corrupted and weaker and we can also see in the suspect page that it's marked as suspicious okay The CheckDB will check the logical and physical integrity of all objects in the specified database. Okay. The CheckDB is vital, very important. The CheckDB does a lot of things. It does a check alloc. It checks the consistency of the disk space allocation structure. It does a check table. It checks the integrity of the page that make up the table or the view. It, it, uh, it does a DBCC check catalog on the database. The CheckDB does a lot of things. I will explain the details of these DBCC commands later. The CheckDB does all that. The CheckDB also validates the content of each indexed view in the database. It validates whether the index are up to date and sorted correctly. It validates the service broker data in the database and it also checks whether the data on each page, its page, sorry, it's up to date. The CheckDB is very simple to use. We do DBCC CheckDB with the database name in brackets with code. Okay. There are also a lot of options that we will see later in the CheckDB. The CheckDB is very consuming in terms of CPU and high disk. Okay, don't do a check DB in the middle of the day. There, when there is a lot of traffic on your SQL database, do it at night. It's very consuming. Be very careful when you use the check DB. You will see that in terms of your CPU, memory, and high usage statistic. You will see that it's going to be very consuming. It must, it must be used on all database except TMDB. Okay? There is a lot of discussion about that, but for me, I don't use it on TMDB database and I have, I have never, never seen any corruption case on TMDB. So if you want to do it on this database, TMDB, and waste time, go ahead. But for me, there's no reason to do it. You can use multiple threads for, you should know that you are using the standard version SQL Server, the CheckDB will be slower because it's not going to use multiple threads. Okay, you should have the enterprise version. You can also deactivate the parallelism by deactivating the trust flag 2828. Okay, it may take longer. If you have problems with parallelism, you can deactivate it by doing a check -dip. A survey was done on the frequency of JTB that are made on production database around the world. There are many DBA that uh, responded to this survey and first of all we can see that in 61% of the case the CheckDB is used without option. Okay, We don't know more detail about why, it, why it's used without option, but it's just to give you an idea what, why is run without option. So there you go, 61, that's 
wants what comes out first. Secondly, if it's if uh, it's the check DB restored and launch on the database that has been restored on another server. Okay, I uh, don't see the point, but uh, fifteen percent of people does that. The check DB uh, with the physical only option on the production database it's like ten percent, and there are. 12% who don't know what is uh, what is this so they don't run it which is still a bit uh, creepy this is uh, a survey that was launched launch all over the, all over the world sorry by SQL skills that show that 61% use the checkdb without option on the production database so, how often do you use the CheckDB? 37% use it, use it once a week. 25% use it once a day. And 5% use it once a month. There are still people who ask what consistency checks are about. So, 9% don't know how 9% uh, don't know about data integrity in checks. It's a, it's a bit scary. 9% don't know what is it. And some people run in where there is a corruption. Okay, so there you go. You see that 37% and 25%, fortunately, there are people who use it once a week or and once a day. Okay, this is the demo for backup with function. Backup with function will control if there are any corruption on your backup. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go for the demo. Drop and create database. This done. Setting glitch. Use backup demo, create table, and it set just one more. Nothing complicated for the moment and backup database. Okay, now let's look at this database by the dbccing command. dbccing command is not, it's quite easy to set up. It's just backup demo, the name of the database, and the name of the table. Okay, let's go for the BCC in and the, in this demonstration, we are corrupt. We are going to corrupt the name 147, 47 page. Okay. To corrupt a page, you should use the BCC right page command. Okay. The to write a page the database must be in single user mode. Of course, I never do this in production. Uh, single user mode. And we are change the hexadecimal 147 page. OK? OK, let's go for the DBCC right page. And now set, set up the backup demo database on in multi user. Okay, corruption has been done. So what does the select give? Corruption has been detected. And if we check the number of, of page which has been corrupted is how page? 147. Okay? Okay, the table, the table checksum is now corrupt because we corrupted the database. What if I tried a backup without the backup option? I forget to do this.
Okay, let's go for the backup. Backup has been done, although the data page, data page is corrupted. It's a, it's a little worrying. With checksum option, checksum will check the corrupted that page on each backup. Let's go for the backup with checksum option. And we have a good message error, a magnifique error message. The backup demo detected on an error on page 147. Okay, shapes of the sound is very powerful. There is an option which allows to bypass the checksum. It's continue after a while. I am not a very big fan of this option because uh, is is bypass the corruption on your backup. Okay, but it's a solution when if you want to bypass this. This corruption. Okay, so you have you have a warning message, a backup of a damaged database. Okay, in summary, personally, I set up a checksum on all my backup. It does not slow down performance and is it's an additional safety, not to be neg neglected. Okay, so let's go for the next demo. Restore or repair, we can ask ourselves this question. Do you need to restore in some cases and repair in um, in, other, in other case, sorry. Um, restoration is generally, we are not going to hide the easiest, but is also the last resource, resource for most DBA. We are going to use the restoration to save time, and uh, when you have tried every other solution, at some point you have to restore. Okay, but it's also possible that the repair may make may take less time than a restore. Don't forget that. Okay, a restore can uh, take hours will while a repair can only take a few seconds it's up to you okay everybody has his case in front of him to see what decision to take so you have to think about that we rarely think about it but when we are in a case of corruption look how long it will take if the repair time is as important as the lost data depending on the company case it's better to go for a repair try to do a repair and see what conclusion you draw from it okay if you know you have lost data if you accept that why not to do a repair okay you can ask yourself several other questions do you have do you still have a database? Is the database still available? No. As soon as you unfold the database, you can see that it's completely available. We have error everywhere. Windows, SQ, Windows SQL, you have to restore. Don't try to do a repair. Is useless. Restore the database. Okay. Do you have working backup? We believe that all backups work, but do you do a backup with checksum? That is the question. Do you restore, do you validate, validate sorry, the backups you do? If you are in a case where your backups don't work, you will have to use the repair, okay? Or restore a damaged backup, or export the data to another database. Okay, so there are the option you uh, you have in this case where you no longer have a backup that works. Is the flag files corrupt? You go for a restore. Okay, in the log, generally the solution is to restore. Don't buffer yourself with it. Okay. 
your decision will be taken according to the Imperial or recovery point objective, which will designate the maximum amount of time of data saving that it's acceptable to see to lose. Okay. You so you have to say to your IPO how much data you are ready to lose. And also in relation to the RTO, which means the maximum amount of time of admissible interruption. Okay? In the RTO, you can say how long you can do an outage. It depends on the company as well. The RPO and RTO, generally speaking, vary enormously depending on companies. It's up to you. Emergency mode. It allows to repair a transaction log that is damaged. Okay, so we will enter this mode when the log are corrupted or damaged or after a SQL server restart or during an always zone failover. The log is corrupt. Okay. It can be various cases uh, that we can have on the logs and we can use emergency mode to repair record. Uh, to repair this log, sorry. We are going to do a demonstration. We are going to use master, delete the database and recreate it. Let's go. I'm going to create a table, insert the data, and I'm going to simulate a crash. I'm going to open a transaction, make an update on the table, use, and I'm going to force the update page on the disk by the through the checkpoint, which is normally launched uh, every minute. Okay. Intran update and change point. Sorry. Update and change point. So um, here I'm going to simulate a crash. I'm going to stop the machine with the shutdown with no wait, which is here. I launch it, I'm going to redo a request and launch it. Launch it, sorry. Just use company. You have the messages here. Your connection is connection is broken and recovery is not possible. Okay, the server was stopped with a no wait from the connection. Here, um, so here the server is being stopped. On my side, I'm going to open the ex editor, the editor that allows to open log file or MDF files. So I'm going to open the logs and I'm going to put some data in hexadecimal and I'm going to save. Okay, open the log. Sorry. Okay, it's what not the good fol folder. Open. Open the log just here, it's good, and type zero. Save the logs. Okay, it's done. I will restart SQL Server. Here we go, the restart is quite fast. And restart and enter use company. And we, we <laughs> found out uh, that it's quite complicated. Okay, the database company can, can be open because file are not accessible. So it's not the good connection. Okay, connection is good. Use company. Try again. Okay, let's make a zoom. Database company can be opened due to inaccessible files or 
insufficient memory of this space. Okay. You can see that the message given by SQL is not very close to reality. You can see that there is a cultural lock. We talking about the company database. We not talking about logs. Okay. The log is called and the database on the left is on recovery pending. Okay. The log is correct. The base, the database is in recovery pending. Okay. So uh, as you as soon you see uh, as you see uh, recovery pending, think about logs. Okay. We don't have any backups. The database is in suspect mode. Okay. You select statue is suspect. Okay, so I'm going to put the database in emergency mode with the syntax set emergency just here. Set emergency, okay. Let's get a look on the left side. Company database is in emergency mode. Use the select. We can see that the Select is not correct. Okay, we have access to the data. There's no problem there, but the logs has corrupt. Okay, we are going to put the database in single user mode. Just here, a database in single user mode and launch a repair allow data loss. In the check DB, we see that, that the log file header is not the value database, valid database file header. Okay, the page of this property is incorrect and so on. File activation failure. I won't go into details. It gives me solution that has a hard dot clause to uh, what uh, we are looking for. Okay, let's try it again after the check DB. The database is online. The database has returned to the normal mode. It went directly from suspect mode to online mode. Okay. We can see that in this case, the repair allow data loss uh, was conclusive. Okay. The select is good. And check on the left side. It's single user, but the database is now online. Put it in which user. Database is now online. Okay. We will see that in some case, emergency mode does not repair everything. Okay. In this case, we will see that it's not possible. Okay. Um, we're going to delay the database and recreate it. Create database. I'm going to make it faster for the demonstration. Insert data. Okay, then I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make a corruption on the PFS page. I'm going to corrupt the PS face page with is which is sorry a free space page. I'm doing a do a back page. Let's go. We can see that it's very fast. I'm going to after a begin run and the same thing as before. I do a not that it's a value to zero. It's set. You can see that during the date, the company database log is not available. Consult the log error, resolve all error, failure, failure to record the ID, many, many errors. Okay, during or doing a log operation, the, the database is not at its best. Okay, what is the status of the database? 
here we go back to the suspect mode just here okay we have a work rather than work on dependency but now it's in the suspect mode we try to do a select let's set in english try to do a select database company cannot be open to the inaccessible file or and so on the select, the select is not available anymore we see that the corruption of the PFA page is very serious you see that we have the same message as as before but the error but error is not uh, close to what we have the file are inaccessible we are going to do a check db check db and we have the same error insufficient disk space and memory i put the database in emergency mode sorry an update okay database company is now in emergency mode I do a check db here it's uh, complicated there is a lot of corruption where well, i see a check db like that uh, i have a headache <laughs> there is a lot of corruption i'm not going to go in details in details sorry in uh, detail of everything okay there is a IAM page and index allocation page. Uh, all, the all index objects are corrupted. Okay. We, uh, we will do a repair allow data loss. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try this. We have the same error message. Possibly TMDB. Many, many error due to the corruption page error on scams gam and poeface page it's very complicated okay in fact the error are not in phase with that we want they talk about space but it also say that sometimes we have to make line breaks to understand that the IAM page is designated by the next pointer we you can see here means pointer by to the next page okay so we can see here there is there is a corruption we see that several page pages will be corrupted in in addition there is no continuity in the database data consistency is no longer ensured in this case okay let's look at the statues we see that as soon as we put the database in emergency in emergency mode so with single user and we do a repair allow data loss we go directly on it it makes the database accessible okay it's very important if we do a check db again always the same error okay in this case um, we see that the emergency mode did not repair the problem the emergency mode can be useful in some cases to repair some file but in some cases we see it uh, that it doesn't repair everything okay change the owner of your database when you create a database by default an owner is affiliated to it okay by default the account that created the database database so we will harm it if i am logged in as, as is then it will be the owner of the database so let's go for a demo session i have already created a database test owner and uh, here we can see in the, this query with uh, join on the sys dm view sys database sys 
server principles. Let's run the query and you can see that I am the owner of the database. Okay, holy fifty. It's me. We can also know it by the SP help DB. SPLDB will also tell you who is the owner of the database. Okay, it's again me. We can also see that uh, it at the graphic level. Let's right click properties and option. So it's file and the owner just here. Okay, so you have to be very careful when granting the rights. The owner of a database doesn't, must not be just anyone. We will see uh, in demonstration why. So let's create a simple user, login GB owner with a simple password, one, two, three, four. And you can see that the login GB owner has the right to do nothing on no database on all the server. Okay. And you can see that in the test owner database, the login has no right. And I will change the owner of the database. Uh, there are two ways to do this. So let's with SP change DB owner, which will disappear in future version of SQL. We can also do it with alter authorization on the database. Okay. Test owner to the login DB owner. We will see both where and we will see that birth work and we see that the owner of the database is no longer me it's now the login gb owner okay the owner of the database, database sorry has changed and we will see that by magic when you double click on the double login db owner sorry you can see that now the login db test owner has the db owner row membership on the database. It's map to the database. Okay. So when you define a default default SQL user who will have the database, it will have the db owner rights on the database. Okay. DB owner has the rights to do everything on the database. He can create, drop table, he does whatever he wants. Okay? So be extremely careful when you create a database with a login that is going to be ever temporary or that you are going to delete in the next few weeks. Okay? So be careful, this is a small security flow. So by default, you have to put an account that will, will always be present. Me, by default, I put the SQL service account with a very strong password, but I never put a temporary SQL login in the database owner. Okay? So if you log in with the login DB owner, SQL authentication, one, two, three, four. You see that if I unfold any database, it has nothing to do with it. Okay? I can unfold any database. But on the other hand, I when I unfold, unfold sorry, test owner, everything unfolds. Okay? The DB owner login has all the rights on the database. So be careful about the owners of the SQL database.
Conclusion. Here we are at the end of this course on modifying and creating on the database. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for choosing and watching this course. It was a real pleasure. Uh, I too have learned a lot of things by creating this course. It took quite a while, but I discovered option on the database that I didn't know about, so I do learn a lot. Uh, we have seen that there are a myriad of options on the database. We have seen that this that it's far from harmless to activate certain options on the BDD. Maxed up, uh, maxed up auto close of on auto shrink. Be careful when you want to enable them because they are performance issues that can occur. Okay? Also pay attention to the auto growth uh, of your given database. Do not put anything. Okay? Test performance with multiple auto growth and see if there are significant performance improvement. Okay? So, as I told you, think carefully before activating any and see if, is, if there is a need to do so. See you soon for other course. Uh, do not hesitate to, to look at my training catalog on SQL. So, and if you are interested in one, in one of these, do not hesitate to send me an email at holyftone at yahoo.fr. I will send you a coupon for a price between 10 and 15 euro. Okay? There are several topics to cover, so I will do more on hover, even more exciting topics on the Hanover course. Okay? See you soon in the meet and have a good day. Okay, the first isolation mode that we will see is the read committed mode. This is the default isolation mode. Okay, with the read committed, we will read the data that has been validated, that has been committed. Read committed, uh, read committed uh, cannot read dirty data. I show you this after in the following isolation mode, the read uncommitted. The read committed allows non repeatable reads and phantom reads. I will explain this in the following section as well. Uh, we will see uh, a simple example so that you understand what I'm talking about. So we have Nicolas and his friend who are going to make a transaction. Nicolas on the left is going to do an update. Okay, a simple update. What you need to know about SQL when doing an update, there is a lock that is put in place. Okay, it will lock the data while it's, uh, it's being updated. So Nicolas does an update, so he will lock the data. At the same time, his friend is going to do a select. I put a red quote, a red quote sorry, because during the select there is an update, so the select will be locked. Okay? So he's going to wait until Nicolas' update is over. Okay? Once it's completed, uh, the select will be executed. Okay, so what you need to know is that here we are talking about the read committed isolation mode. That uh, is, it will read the data that is validated. Okay, so the select is blocked because the isolation mode that it's, uh, is in place is a read committed which only accept data that is validated, okay? So, come on, I will show you this in the demonstration to make it easier for you. 
Okay, let's go for the demonstration about the read property. Uh, here I have two windows, okay? It's a bit specific demonstration to make it easier for you. Uh, I will show you how to evaluate two overlay, sorry, two separate uh, windows. So you must right click, uh, left click on Windows here and new, sorry for the zoom, new vertical tab group, okay? As you can see, it will be much easier like, like that. So on the left, I have already created a simple database, test isolation, and create a simple table, and it are just five rows. Okay? So what does the CV give? Just five rows on the left. Okay? Uh, so I do, I know which isolation mode uh, we have by default. So we do a DBCC user option. And as you can see, it allows uh, us to see here the isolation mode the database contains. Okay? So you can see here the isolation mode is a read committee. To change, to change the isolation mode on the request, we work with this command, okay, set transaction isolation level read committed or read uncommitted. We see that after. Um, if you want to activate it on the database, we, uh, we will have to make another command that I will explain to you in other session. Therefore, if you want to change to change the isolation mode on a request, we work with this command. Okay, so we are going to start the demonstration. Do a begin trend. Begin trend allows you to open a transaction. So be careful if you open a transaction on SQL, you and you don't close it, you will cause cascading locks which can be very penalizing on hover processing on SQL log and so on. Okay, so be careful. So let's open a transaction, let's begin turn. And after the begin turn, I do an update. Okay, it's done. In fact, the begin turn, the rollback and the commit as are very useful when you want to modify the data and validate it afterwards. Okay, to be sure that you have modified, that you have modified, sorry, is correct or not. Uh, so I do an update, and what if I do a select on the right side? You can see that the select doesn't work, is locked, okay? Here, it cannot see the data. And if I do a select on the left side, the data is here, okay? So right now, I'm still locked on the, on the right. So I'm going to do a back that is I'm going to go back or back and as you can see on the right the request appeared immediately okay okay we are going to start over I redo a select on the left an update sorry we will begin to run and update and we do uh, this function sp with a select on the same side. And if I run the, this stored procedure to find out who is knock, as you can see, the blocked is the 61, okay, which corresponds to my speed, it's blocked, okay. 
61 is here 61 okay and if I do a wall back it reappears on the right okay so we are in read committed mode we cannot read the data which is dirty okay i hope it's much clearer to you about this mode of of isolation sorry so we are going to switch to read uncommitted isolation mode The read uncommitted isolation mode. Personally, I am not a fan of this method of isolation because it causes a lot of accidents. Okay, I uh, will explain why in the demonstration. Read uncommitted uh, means that dirty data can be read. Okay, you can read data that is not validated. Okay, G generally. We choose this mode to avoid the lock. Uh, this is the least restrictive mode of isolation mode. In fact, you can have everything in this mode. Uh, unrepeatable reads and gold reads uh, and so on. Okay, you have no control over the data. I think you already know the impact of reading data that is not validated. This corresponds to the no lock uh, syntax. If you have done some SQL work before and saw some syntax with no lock at the end that corresponds to the read and committed mode. Okay? So I did. Uh, a schema so in short this is the isolation mode where you don't want don't you don't to get sorry into trouble okay so i uh, did a schema with nicola and his friend uh, first nicola will do an update on the left okay which will modify the value one to replace with the two okay it's very simple for now. Now, his friend John does a select with no lock. Okay? And uh, validates the result with the two. He doesn't want to be disturbed uh, during his select. The problem that his friend got the data from Nicola when we have the value two twice. Okay? Because when he did his select with no log, the data was being modified. So, so what will happen next is that Nicola has opened a transaction to see if uh, his modified value are correct. He's not happy, so he does a rollback. Okay. The problem is that. John on the right uh, select his select was therefore wrong. Imagine if it was you hand counting data, what impact it would have. Okay, the problem is that John left with the wrong select. So let's go and I will show you to the demonstration. So let's go for the demonstration about the read uncommitted. Uh, so we will use the rack windows for code run. Uh, as I already explained, to change the isolation mode in the query, we do this sec transaction. Isolation, isolation, sorry, level read uncommitted. Okay, so let's change it. And DBCC. User option now is good. Isolation level is read uncommitted. Don't forget to be on the test isolation BD. Okay. So we will focus on the value that I showed you 
in the demonstration. We are going to modify the column to, okay? So I'm going to open the transaction. I will do a, an update, okay? Update on the column to. I will put a wet for delay just below, okay? Uh, and at the end, I do a rollback, okay? I open the transaction, add update, just following the select, wait for delay, for pause, for 15 seconds, and roll back, okay? So, and on the left query, I will just do the select from my table with no lock. It's the same thing that the isolation will uncommitted with the syntax no lock, where colon equal to equal to okay so let's execute the request on the left i change the value just 10 seconds and let's run the select on the left and you can see i have the value the value sorry twice two twice and i am in no lock mode okay so the 10 seconds as finish okay and if i run again the select on the left with the no lock option i have only one two okay because i do a rollback on the right so what i did i attacked the table that was being edited with the right value so I, did, I didn't want to be bothered by the update. I did a select while the update on the right was going for 10 seconds. Okay. I have this data that is validated on the left. The value two twice. So this is what the select returns to me. The problem, I did an unlock. But if I do a select, as you can see, the only two the value two only appears once okay so you should never do that unless you don't want to bother with lock uh, but the result can be catastrophic so i strongly advise you to, uh, not to do this this is the read uncommitted demonstration so come on and let's move on to the next session Another isolation mode, the snapshot. So what does the snapshot do? The snapshot makes a copy of the data to be processed for the duration of the transaction. Okay? In fact, it doesn't cause locks because it's the data copy job. Okay? The disadvantage of this method is to force copy these copies on TMDB which can uh, clog the database. It can cause slowness, logs, and so on. Uh, in some cases, uh, the snapshot is very practical to avoid having ghost reading, but you have to be careful at the volume level, okay? At the transaction, transactional sorry, level on the TMDB database, the system database, okay? So yeah, that you understand a little better, I did a schema again. We still have Nicola and John. We have two transactions and Nicola makes a select on the left. Okay. The select returns the value one value from one to five. Okay. So what happens when the isolation mode is snapshot is that it, uh, is that it will make a copy of the, to the TMDB okay and what will happen in the meantime is that John on the right will insert the value 6 okay afterwards Nicola on the left will do a select 
and during the transaction, uh, but it will always have five values because the values from one to five have been compared to the 10 dB. Okay, so uh, John was not uh, locked on the right because Nicola found the same value during the same transaction. It was not the victim of the ghost reading. Okay, so Nicola, it say because he did not have false values. This is uh, very useful in some cases to avoid having ghost reading. So it's recommended in some cases. Um, so check that. So come on and we will see in the demonstration. So let's go for the snapshot demonstration. We use our database as usual and we're going to drop and recreate a table so here we will first we will try first with the default read committee okay so i do a begin run a select a wait for the for the pause of 10 seconds an another select and a commit and on the, the left i just insert the value six okay so let's run and let's run so what will happen are we going to have a phantom value so as you can see on the right uh, there is a phantom value okay between the two readings at the top and we have the last value is five and at the bottom we have the six with she's added so to avoid this kind of problem we will switch to the database the snapshot database so let's rename the database and we do an alter database set a low snapshot isolation on okay so let's run it and let's check uh, no you have to just set ration is just here and dbcc option you can see that now my isolation level is on snapshot okay so let's drop and create again the same table select just five rows okay let's continue so let's transaction isolation level level snapshot begin to the same query as before let's go and let's insert the value on the left and here you can see we don't have any ghost readings okay so as you see in some cases is very handy we don't have any ghost readings between the two select this is the initialization mode that is used quite a bit in some cases okay uh, as i say you should not overdo is because it will put a lot of stress on the temp db which you have to isolate on the separate disk because it's a, G, a disk that it uh, that is particularly stressed in terms of writing so if you have a storage uh, for your database or you have a powerful read and like ssd why not okay but if you have a low storage uh, for your database or you don't have an ssd sorry if you have bottlenecks through the performance on the tdb if there is a large number number of right you have to see if you set up this isolation mode okay uh, i will talk about these performance issues in other trainings so come on let's go to the next isolation mode. The board. It 
indicates whether SQL Server automatically rollbacks the current transaction. Okay, when the transact SQL instruction raises an error. By default, uh, it's disabled. So when uh, you activate it and launch a transact SQL instruction, it generates an execution error. The transact the transaction sorry is interrupted and makes a full rollback of it. Okay, we will see all this in this demonstration right away. So use solution as usual. So let's activate it. So for activate the exact airport on by default it's this syntax sorry for the zoom okay set exact about to on it is on and if you want to know if the exact about is activate or not now it appears in the dbcc user option so you can see that the exact about is here so i will create uh, i have i will create two tables sorry and i need set four values just four and deactivate the exact about to half i do a begin transaction and insert three values knowing that there will, that, sorry, there will be a foreign key error in the value 2. Okay? So, let's go. So, but as you see, the insert statement conflicted with the foreign construct. Okay? And what does the select give? As you see, uh, even if there is an error in the value 2, 1 and 3 were inserted. Okay? So he inserted the value 1 and the value 3. So if you don't want this error, you can activate the exact abandon as you've seen before. So let's activate it and run this begin transaction. So we insert three values while also knowing that there will be an error on the values five. And we see that in this case, neither the four nor the six were inserted to. Okay, so let's run the query. So there is an insert statement conflicted with the foreign key. Okay, no problem. And if we run the select, so when you activate the exact abort, if there is an error, it makes a full rollback of all the transaction that we have inserted okay so hope you have learned something about transaction management if you want to do a full rollback you have to just activate it and everything will be reset to zero okay so let's go to the next demonstration so what is a debug for example we have two users just one a sorry for table A and the user B for the table B. So user A will lock the table A and user B will also lock the table B. Okay, everything is still fine. The descriptive element where is when the user A is going to want to lock the table B. So when he try to do so, he will be put on hold. He will be put a lock. 
which is normal on SQL. Since user B didn't finish his, trans his transaction on the table B, on his table yet. And here we are going to talk about the deadlock. Of, um, this is when the user B is going to want to lock the table A. Okay? So SQL Server realizes a problem and kills one of the worrying parties. SQL Server will realize that there is a problem and that this transaction will never end. So it will kill one of the user. Okay? By default, uh, the one who is killed in the, is the one who consumed the least resource, which is logical when we know the cost of the rollback. Okay? So if we have, for example, two updates and one and one is more consuming than the other, the less consuming will be killed in order to better manage its rollback. Okay, so we are going to do a demonstration to show you all this. Okay, let's go for the demonstration about the deadlock. I have already created these two tables, table one and uh, table A and table B. Okay, and insert just two single rows, Laurel and Hardy. Okay, and the select you have Laurel and Hardy. Okay, so we are going to put it vertically to understand better. For this, okay. okay, just this one and this one. Here we have two transactions. Okay, on the right I have a transaction one, and on the two, on the left, sorry, we have the transaction 2 okay so we play I will first play the uh, transaction on the right so it's just a simple update with the begin form and update the table A okay so far nothing complicated and I do a begin form an update on the table B begin transaction and Okay, it's good. Okay, just to update on table A and on the table B. After we will return to the query on the right and we will do the third transaction. Okay, uh, update table B and open a new transaction. The third transaction. The third transaction is when the user A will try to do an update on the table B. Okay. Table B on this one, on the on the left, okay. And since user B hasn't has not finished yet, user A is put on hold. It is a uh, locked, okay. After that, there will be there will be sorry a fourth transaction will be matched by with been made sorry by user B who will also try to do an update on the first transaction which is on the table hey okay so we have two open transactions two updates that intersect on two separate tables okay So let's run the query. And we have the deadlock. After a while, it will be it will deadlock. Okay? We got an error message. The process as the 55 has been blocked was and was deadlocked on lock resource. Okay? with another process and has been chosen as the deadlock victim. Okay? Here we can see that the update has been executed, but the fourth transaction has been shut down. Okay? 
So that's the principle of the deflect. As soon as SQL Server see, sees that there is a complete deadlock before for transaction, in this case, SQL Server prefers to kill the resource that consumes the least amount. Okay? So, let's go to the next demonstration. A video I want <coughs> to make to tell you about the UPD, the uh, UPD log correspond to the update log. Okay, we saw before the no log, which correspond to the real committed isolation mode. We have also seen the hard lock, which correspond to the serializable isolation mode. And here we have the syntax. Uh, which does not belong to any isolation mode, the UPD log. Okay? The UPD log gets you locked when you do an update and a delay. So I will do a very quick demonstration for you. So use that simulation and let's run this select. And I run the query with the 10 seconds pause and to select as usual. But in the meantime, on the left, I'm going to do an update. Okay? In the update, for example, I will put the value for where the instead of the file. Okay? Nothing too difficult. So let's go, let's run the to select on the right. Okay, and let's run the update on the left. As you can see, the update is locked. Okay, so we are completely locked out at the update level. Uh, this corresponds uh, a byte to the serializable mode, except that here we just did a lock at the update level. Uh, so we see uh, that the two select returns the same result even for, uh, we have made a modification in the main time. Okay, we have exactly the same result. Okay, so let's commit. Okay, it's done. And if I redo the select. We can see that the value five, sorry, has been uh, have been updated. Okay, now it's two four. So we were locked out during the data selection. The update has been locked out. It's exactly the same thing for the delete as well. Uh, for example, if I want to remove the two, the column two, so let's. We run the to select with the update lock and we play the same transaction, delete. I do a delete, but we see that the delete is locked. Okay? And here on the windows on the right as finish, we have been unable to delete the to which by checking is no longer there. Okay, so if we redo a select, we can see that the row 2 has been deleted. Okay, however, we are not uh, blocked from insertion. Let's rerun the to select, and we can see if I will insert. We can see. Uh, if I run the buff, buff to select, we select. You can see that the values nine is here. Okay, so it has not been locked. So UPD log, update log will block you from doing an update and a delete. Uh, UPD log, update log is seen uh, very rarely, but you can use it for in some critical treatments. 
So come on and let's move on to the next section. Since the isolation modes are an important subject, it's necessary to make a conclusion on this chapter. We will tell ourselves that when committed is sufficient for most SQL processing. Okay? A badly chosen isolation mode can have dramatic consequences on data, especially in real unconnected. As we saw in the demonstration, this can be dramatic for the return of the data. Okay, so when using it, be extremely careful. What are you going to do with this mode of isolation? Okay. The choice of an isolation mode must be carefully considered with the team, developer, problem manager, DBA, and so on. Okay? So before changing the default, default isolation mode, the new mode must be tested, approved at the performance level, at the functional level. So think about it carefully. The idea of systematically using the strongest level of isolation in order to avoid any problems can be insidious because snapshot quite strong use of TMDB. We said to ourselves we are going to hop for snapshot because each time we have a copy of the data on the TMDB. So we will have never problems with dot reading, ghost reading, repetitive readings, and uh, so on. So we say to ourselves that it will be a very simple solution. On the other hand, there is going to be a heavy use of TMDB. So watch this. Okay? Serializable locks everything down while I'm doing select or transaction. Okay? But it's a bit of a hassle because if, for example, I do a select for 20 minutes, no one will have access to the database for the 20 minutes anymore. Okay? In short, without being a specialist, the choice of an isolation level is delicate and deserves to be studied carefully. Okay? So thank you for watching this chapter on the isolation mode and have a good day. The schema. This is something you will often see in the SQL Server when creating a table or store procedure or view. Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe you never paid attention, uh, but schema exists on tables by default and also on story procedure view all SQL server objects. Okay, so we are going to do a little section about the schema. So what is the schema? We can consider the schema as a bag. Okay, uh, where we will put all the objects in it. Okay, be it a table, story procedure, view, and so on. Okay, so a schema is like a bag where we put object. You, you will understand, you will understand why afterwards. Okay, we can also consider schema uh, as a sub basis. It can be convenient to divide your base into several parts in order to manage these different parts separately. Okay. Schema are very useful for security or SQL Server. We will do a demonstration to better understand. And you must to know that the default schema on SQL Server is DBO. Okay? If you create a table and you don't put the name of the schema, it's DBO by default. Usually, usually software package create their, their whole schema to separate their tables from tables in the schema debut. Okay? So we can say that uh, a schema look 
like this. I have a schema on the lay called schema and when I go to create storage procedure table or view on the rack, you can say that these objects are going to be put in this name. Okay? So storage procedure, table and view are going to be put in this way. So we will see in the demonstration to make, to make it clear for you. Let's go for the demonstration concerning the schema. Okay, let's go for the demonstration about the schema. I use my database formation as usual. As you can see, the syntax in Sible to create a schema. Create schema with the name of my schema. Okay, you can see it's quite simple. Okay, so let's create the schema. It's done. And you can see that the schema on SQL Server are in the security section. Okay, if I do a refresh, schema on the security section, schema, and you can see that Star Wars schema has appeared in my schema section. Okay. So here I'm going to I'm gonna to create a table that will be linked to this schema. So create table with the name of my schema before the name of the table with the point. Okay. Schema and the table that I want to create with the name of my column. Column one. A simple column. Let's create the table with the schema Star Wars and if I do a refresh on my table in into the formation database you can see that the new table Star Wars Skywalker is up here. Uh, you, you can see that it's different compared to the other tables that we created in the previous section. So the GBO schema is the default schema when creating a table. Okay, you can see the DBO schema by default when you're creating a table. It's very important to remember about the schema. So we insert a value in this new table that I created. And to remind you when we create a table, if we don't put a schema default in front of the name of the table, it will take the default schema, which is DBO. Uh, let's, let's go for the creation of a view. You can create a view uh, with an another schema with a specific schema. For example, I want to create a view with a specific schema. Okay, let's create this view. And if we refresh the view, you can see that the Star Wars view with the schema Star Wars view Dark Vador is now created. Okay. And we, if we look at the view, select from Star Wars, my view Star Wars, you can see that there is just one more. It works, it's working perfect, perfectly. Remember, you can also create a story procedure with the different schema, like the view. The great advantage of schema is the security. Okay, it's the big advantage of the security schema. I will create, for example, a user called Hobby1 with the store with the, the password. So we want to three four five uh, until the nine and let's create Hobby1 user. If you want to see where is your 
no friend it's obi-wan it's just here okay i create a user a new user on the sql server on my sql server uh, security sorry hey and i'm going to attach the obi-wan obi-wan her account her account sorry to the database now you can see that obi-wan is now here obi-wan can access to the formation and to finish let's give obi-wan the right to this account grant select on schema star wars to obi-wan he will have the ability to just select the table on the schema star wars to uh, just on the schema star wars okay come on i will give him the right to the schema okay it's good and now i will log in with his account on the new windows so let's go for the new windows no it's the another windows it's this windows and i'm gonna to connect with the uh, obi-wan accounts so let's go for connect just here connect database engine and let's this formation and sql server authentication okay just choose this option and we type the obi one with the password one two three four five six seven until the nine sorry it's not the good server i think is this one and retype the good password and now is now hobby one is connect is connected to the sql server on my sql server okay okay so now let's make a right click on the server new query and copy and paste the script okay you can see on the bottom right that it's obi-wan that is corrected okay okay let's use formation database for Obi for obi-wan uh, user account it's working okay Obi-Wan can connect to the formation database. And what does the select give from the DBO contact? So Nicola want to just to make a select for on this table. Let's run this query and you have a we have a error message. Select permission was denied on the OGP contact database. Schema db okay and with the schema dark matter the schema star wars sorry so let's run the star wars select the select on the star wars schema it's worked okay because obi-wan has the good right to the schema star wars and don't have the right to the schema dbo okay this is the great advantage of the schema is that you can give give rights to a different schema okay so as i showed you before we put the object of the star wars schema in this bag okay of obi-wan so obi-wan we only see the object that have the Star Wars schema. And, and, that the, and that is the big advantage of the schema. Okay, so come on, let's move to the next section.